everyone, Mauricio Reynald, your founder of Premier Law Group, your premier syndication attorneys. And today, I wanted to talk to you guys about pivoting from a 506B to a 506C. Now, this is a relatively new rule that came out about 18 months ago and was actually the topic of my inaugural Real Estate Syndicator Live that we did, uh, where we did a really deep dive into this topic for about an hour or so. But I wanted to give you guys sort of a summary, and if you guys are more interested, you can always go check out that video. But about 18 months ago, we were provided with this gift where syndicators can now literally start a 506B or start a syndication using 506B, just like they do today. But at some point during that raise, make the decision to pivot, to actually terminate or stop that 506B and turn it into a 506C. Now, obviously you can see that if you've started a raise and you're falling short, you're having a little bit of a hard time uh, raising the capital from the people already in your network, having this option of pivoting is actually pretty attractive so that you can get your raise over the finish line. Now, to be clear, we're talking about the same apartment building, the same piece of real estate, the same deal, but we're technically talking about two separate offerings, but this is how it works. You start your offering just like you do now under a 506B and you comply fully with the terms of 506B, right? So you can take up to 35 non-accredited investors. There's no advertising, no generally soliciting, uh, but you generally have to have a pre-existing substantive relationship with your investors, but you can take up to 35 non-accredited, which is obviously the attractive part of that uh, exemption. And then at some point in the middle of the raise, you make the determination that I'm done with 506B, I terminate it, and I mean terminate that offering, uh, and then from that point forward, you start complying fully with 506C, meaning what? Meaning you're only gonna accept accredited investors only uh, moving forward and you're going to take reasonable steps to verify that those investors are in fact accredited. You're not going to be able to take your, their word for it or just rely on a questionnaire like we do with 506B. But you are allowed obviously to generally solicit and advertise. So you can now put your offering on social media, go on podcasts, do whatever it is you need to do in order to market your deal and get that deal across the finish line without having to have that pre-existing substantive relationship. A lot of clients are starting to do this because, as you can imagine, it's getting a little bit harder to raise capital these days, and having this option in your back pocket is really, really cool. Now, there are some best practices or safeguards that we like to implement when using this strategy. One of those best practices is to make the decision to do the pivot prior to starting your syndication. And the reason we want to do it prior to starting the syndication is because we want to give everybody the proper disclosures and let them know that this is what we plan on doing, or at least something that we potentially will plan on doing. And one of the things that we like to recommend our clients is actually separating or creating two separate classes of shares, or in this case, membership units, each one representing the 506B and the 506C so that there's no confusion out there when you're actually advertising of which, which, which deal you're actually doing. So typically when we structure these, we still create our LLC just like every other syndication that's gonna own whatever property you're buying, but instead of just having class A and class B, which we usually have, class A being the investors and then class B being the sponsors, we actually create a class A1 and a class A2. The A1 is only issued pursuant to 506B, and then when we pivot, we stop selling A1 units and we start selling A2 units. This way, there's absolutely no confusion of which exemption we were relying on when somebody maybe heard your offering on a podcast or saw it on a, on a social media post. So making the distinction early on makes it really easier for us to show that we didn't commingle these two offerings, because that's probably the biggest danger, is you've gotta make sure that when you're doing the 506B, you're complying fully with 506B, and when you're doing the C, you're complying fully with 506C. You don't wanna start commingling, right? So anyway, that's one of the main recommendations we have for our clients is make sure we split up the, the, the classes so that it's very clear which one's a 506B, 506C. The other thing that's very, very important is to make sure that it's very clear when you made that termination, when you actually made the decision to stop doing the 506B and start doing the 506C. This is critical because again, you wanna be able to show that there's no commingling. One of the ways we like to do that is through actually a corporate resolution. We like to actually do a resolution that says, hey, on this date, we have 
terminating our 506B offering. We're no longer doing a 506B. We're no longer accepting documents. We're no longer accepting wires. There's no lingering effects. There's no IRA money that's, you know, that's been delayed. We've, we're completely done with 506B. And on this date, we're pivoting to 506C. And it's really nice to have that corporate resolution or written consent in your file. And by the way, I would actually notarize that document as well or DocuSign it or something that timestamps it so there's no way anybody can argue that you've actually backdated that or, or done that after the fact. So those are kind of our top two recommendations for best practices. And of course, the last one we would do is actually file two separate Form Ds. Because again, you've got to think about this. These are two separate offerings, even though they're the same deal, they're the same, virtually the same documentation, uh, but it's, it's the same, uh, same deal. And so we file two Form Ds, one for the 506B within 15 days of that termination day, and then we file another uh, Form D uh, within 15 days of completely finishing the raise under 506C. Now note, you can go from a 506B to a 506C, you cannot go reverse. You cannot start a 506C, start advertising, and then go back to a 506B. So if you want to get a little bit more in depth of it, I'll put the link down below of our Real Estate Syndicate Alive episode one, our inaugural episode, and you can check out more details then. Until then, we'll see you next time.